I feel like I'm living the story of the shoemaker's daughter where he was the best shoemaker in the village and yet his daughter didn't have any shoes. As an interior designer, people expect my bedroom to be like straight out of Architectural Digest. And in reality, this is usually what it looks like. Just, no. <laughs> Hello stranger and welcome to my channel. My name is Kelsey, which you already knew because I put my name on the title. I've only made about like, I don't know, eight videos so far and all the YouTube gurus say that you need to pick a niche in order to, I don't know, like narrow down your audience and grow faster. But I suffer from severe commitment issues and a lack of concentration. So I basically just like to make videos about whatever I'm feeling that day, whether that be veganism, interior design, so instead of deciding the exact direction of my YouTube channel, I'm just gonna make whatever I feel like that day. And today is interior design related to something. And that's because I took some time off of work and I'm back, this is my first week back, and I'm excited to get back into it and actually like work for a living. This is gonna be a really casual chatty video, nothing too crazy, no special effects, but there will be of course the occasional meme that I edit in later. In this video, I'll be telling you about my interior design journey, how I got into it, and then go into more detail about my specific job, my responsibilities, and what I do day to day. Finally, I'll be giving you some of my tips if you are interested in becoming a professional interior designer. Just a little preface before I get into the video. When I say professional interior designer, I don't mean I have a lot of followers on Pinterest and I decorate my room with white paint and plants, and now I'm telling other people how to decorate their room with white paint and plants. I am a professional working in the corporate interior design and architecture industry. I have two degrees. I have both a bachelor's and a master's degree of interior architecture and design from Drexel University. And I have a couple years of experience. So I would like to think that I have some credibility. At least I hope I do. I'm hoping to give people who are interested in becoming an interior designer, whether you're looking into going to school for it, or if you're a working adult and you just find it interesting. If you are currently an interior designer or already a student in an interior design program, then I hope that maybe my my experiences can help you in whatever journey you're going through right now, leave me a comment down in the box and we can learn from each other. As I say this, I'm moving my mouse so that my boss doesn't think I'm not working because I'm not working. <laughs> hey boss, this is my lunch break, I promise. So I'm just gonna get right into it. When I was a child, I was always really creative. I was always interested in art. My mom was a Boy Scout leader for my little brother, and so my job was to help her set up all the little crafts. So I was a crafts kid. We were a crafts family. Not only that, I always loved taking art classes through elementary, middle, and high school. I was always in some kind of art class. Of course, they tell you that you can't do anything realistic or professional or make any money as an artist. So I always thought that was just a hobby for me and that being some kind of creative field was not really feasible. In addition to being a really artistic and creative kid, I am 100% an OCD perfectionist. The reason why I am so terrible at painting and sculpture and all those other really loose mediums is because I am, when I draw, I'm like up against the paper. Seriously, this close. The third portion of my personality I would consider to be my most embarrassing trait. I was, and still a little bit today am, obsessed with The Sims. And I'm sure you know what that game is. If you don't, honey, you've been living under a rock. But The Sims is essentially this life simulator game where you can build homes and I guess simulate real life and get a job and make money. When you say it out loud, it doesn't actually sound that fun. But trust me, it was, and I spent hours and hours and hours playing The Sims when I was little. I would build the house and then I would scrap the family and start all over again and build a new house. Because I loved doing that in my free time and because I was such a perfectionist and I actually was really good at math too, I always thought that being an architect would be such an amazing job. Right out of high school, I applied for a bunch of different colleges, kind of put my feelers out to a couple other architecture specific schools and one in particular was Penn State. I was accepted to Penn State's School of Architecture program. When I went to go visit that school, I had like a mild panic attack. Apparently when you are studying architecture at any school, you have zero free time. You have zero time for activities. You have zero time for socialization. It is work, 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 work. As an incoming freshman, I knew that partying was going to be a vital aspect of my future adult life. And I was not willing to give that up yet. So instead of accepting my place in an architecture school, I settled for a state school upstate in New York that was a little bit cheaper and I just studied liberal arts. While I was at Oneonta, I 
basically did a lot of partying. I was always a good student. I never skipped classes and stuff, but I never took any classes that were really that challenging. And I also said I was an art major with a design concentration, which doesn't really mean anything when you're not going to an actual art school. For me, that meant I was taking basic classes in painting. I was taking basic classes in like color. I would take a couple art history classes. Like there really wasn't any rhyme or reason to it. I wasn't really learning anything. About halfway into my second year at Oneonta, I actually had a realization that, oh my God, I have to graduate in two and a half years and I have no idea what my job is gonna be and I am not qualified to do anything. I considered going back to the architecture program, but I still was really intimidated by the workload and I didn't know if I was committed enough to, to commit to that. <laughs> I didn't actually think that interior design was a job. I hadn't really heard of anybody who was an interior designer, but my mom actually suggested the idea to me because it mixes architecture and art and fuses them together. It's a little less intense school-wise and it's more creative than you would be at if you were just an architect. And I was like, you know what, bitch? You wanted something here. So I made my decision and I knew I was gonna transfer to a school that had an interior design program. I applied and got into, and of course accepted, Drexel University. Drexel is an amazing private school located in Philadelphia, and I just can't say enough good things about it. And I'm not just saying that because I went there, I'm saying that because I really truly believe that their program is one of the best. The main thing that drew me to Drexel was they have a co-op program where for at least six months, depending on your major, you could have to do more co-ops, you could just have one co-op, but essentially a co-op is a full-time internship. It could be unpaid or it could be paid, but most of the internships are paid, especially if you are in a higher demand industry like my industry. I was able to get so much working experience before I even graduated and that just like stepped me up from the competition. That is the main reason that I was so attracted to Drexel and why so many other people are also. Drexel is known for being very expensive. I think it's like, 40 to $60,000 in tuition per year. But because they're so expensive, they give a ton of scholarships. Ugh, sorry, I just gotta move my mouse. <laughs> Another thing I love about Drexel is the balance of their coursework. There are some schools that do a lot of technical skills and there's some schools that do mainly conceptual, which is like more, uh, how do I explain the word conceptual? You're training your artistic eye to see color, balance, form, basic art concepts basically. Drexel's on a quarter system instead of a semester system. So there's four quarters per year instead of two semesters, which means you are taking double the amount of classes as everybody else in the world that's on a regular semester-based system. Another thing is that we don't get summers off. The only people that get summers off are freshmen, which was really a hard pill for me to swallow, and it makes you go a little crazy at times. Back to the classes. The kinds of classes that I was required to take were a combination of foundation art classes, which is like drawing, color theory, and shape and balance and stuff like that. Skills related to architecture and interior design specifically, like how to properly draft and draw floor plans. Technical skills, such as learning the programs that we need to build these in three dimension, modeling programs like Revit, CAD, all that stuff, as well as like Photoshop and InDesign. Some other extracurricular classes that they encourage you take, but it's not necessary for you to take. Graphic design classes, I always took a couple graphic design classes. Furniture classes, I've made three actual furniture pieces that I now have in my apartment. Wood shop, welding, sustainability is a big one. People minor in sustainability. I actually took a wine class to count as a master's credit and I somehow convinced my advisor that I needed to take a wine class because if I ever went out to lunch with a client, I would need to order a bottle of wine and I would need to know what that wine is. And I mean, I, she didn't really give a shit, so I took the wine class. <laughs> I got a C minus in wine class. <laughs> Now let's talk about the co-op program and what other kind of internships I did. I'm a worker bee. I think I started working like my first year that I was at school. Like right when I got to school, I started interning at an architectural firm right outside of Philadelphia called Meyer Design. They needed an intern to work in the library. I helped a little bit with some CAD drawings and I picked out materials and I mean that's really all that you can ask for for your first internship where I didn't know anything and I didn't have any skills. My next internship I did was at a place called TPG Architecture which is located in New York City. I actually did this for my actual co-op. So I was working full time, paid for six months while I was also living in Manhattan. And I ended up working for them full time the year after that for three months. I was working mostly in the retail studio and then the second time I went there I was working in the corporate office studio. I 
am glad that I have the experience of working in retail, but I definitely liked working in the corporate office world a little bit more than I did my second year. Again, New York City is the place I wanted to be, so I was just excited to have my foot in the door. Finally, during my graduate year, I worked part-time at a very small architectural firm called Sargenti. They really just draw construction documents. I'm also not an architect. I was the only interior designer that was in that entire office, so they would give me plans and they'd be like, hey, can you build this whole construction set? And I'd be like, what? Um, that was a little bit of a a struggle and they were like yeah you're doing a great job and I was like you better check my work if I didn't already mention this while I was at Drexel I earned my bachelor's of interior design and my master's of interior architecture and design which is essentially the same exact thing it just found sounds a little bit fancier and when I tell people I'm an interior designer they're like oh like Joanna Gaines I'm like no not like Joanna Gaines I feel like every basic bitch in the world got cable TV and learned what shiplap was and now Joanna Gaines is spewing out of every little inch of society next we'll talk about me looking for jobs after school. Even before I graduated, I reached out to all of these firms that I was interested in and even some that I wasn't interested in. I knew I wanted to do corporate office work, but I wasn't going to be picky as my first job out of college. In addition to putting my feelers out for new companies, I also reached out to all of my old co-workers and my old bosses. In addition to that, I reached out to a couple brand representatives and they know the gossip, the drama, and the job openings at all these companies. My advice on looking for a job after school, physically call people. Pick up the phone, call the HR department, and talk to someone. I cannot tell you the opportunities I've gotten just from talking to someone on the phone rather than sending an email. For example, I'm gonna tell you the story of how I got my current job. Back when I was looking for a co-op position, I called a bunch of companies in New York City to see if they needed an intern. And although I ended up going with TPG, I also was calling my current job. I called this company and I spoke to the HR woman and she was the sweetest woman ever. She said, yes, we're interested in you for an intern position, but we don't decide until the summer. I couldn't wait until the summer. I needed to start my internship a lot sooner. So I politely declined further interviews, but I told her to keep me in her database. Fast forward to at least two years later after I graduated, I sent her a small email saying, hey, my name's Kelly. I don't know if you remember me, I graduated, I'm looking for a job. And she replied, yes, I remember you, definitely, of course, how can I forget you? We don't currently have any job openings, but I'll let you know. I wasn't really having luck finding jobs, but at the same time, I wasn't looking too hard. I had just graduated after six years of intensive schooling, so I wanted to take a vacation. I went off to Spain with my best friend, and while I was in Spain, I think I was a little drunk at this point too. At four o'clock in the morning, I got a phone call from this HR woman. And on the phone, she was like, oh my God, please tell me you don't have a job yet. I know like I have a master's and you're looking for a full-time position, but we are in desperate need of an intern to work in our corporate office studio. And I thought, okay, I don't have a job. I might as well make a little bit of money than no money. I was probably working at that firm for three weeks before they offered me a salaried position. I love my job. I love the company I work at. I love the people that I work at. And I'm in the exact studio and doing the same work that I actually was looking for. So that's my little story about how you need to call people and you need to talk to them on the phone because they will remember you. We are going to break for a quick public service announcement. If you think that you are going to become an interior designer and you're all of a sudden gonna have a million followers on Instagram and have your own Magnolia home book and, you know, be rich and famous, you are surely mistaken. Of course that can happen, but it takes a lot of hard work and it takes a lot of luck and Clearly it's not easy because I have yet to do that also. Don't expect to make a lot of money your first couple of years. I'm a big supporter of breaking the stigma around money. It is no secret that women make a lot less money than men and we need to fight for equal pay. But I am questioning how that's possible if there is a stigma around people talking about what they make. If I make a certain amount of money and my friend who is at my exact same position and has my exact same degree making either significantly less or significantly more, how are we supposed to know that we're getting paid fairly or not? So I'm gonna break that right now and I'm gonna tell you that I made a starting salary of $60,000 per year. Keep in mind, I have a master's degree 
<laughs> we get it, bitch. You have a master's degree. Jeez. I came from a reputable school, and I also am living and working in New York City, one of the most expensive places to live. If I were to start in Philadelphia without a master's degree, just my typical bachelor's degree from Drexel, I would be expecting to make between forty-five and fifty thousand dollars per year. Of course, it all depends on your company and your job title, and of course, the location that you're living and working in. As for my specific job title, my, cut it out, all right, sit. My specific job title is interior designer and I work in the corporate office studio. Corporate office meeting, I help design offices of all kinds from law offices to bank offices to offices like Google. My basic job responsibilities are really anything that my boss tells me to do. More specifically, I make a lot of presentations. I do a lot of floor plan layout, specifying furniture, finishes, and I use a lot of CAD and Revit. Revit especially, which if you don't know about it, it's a 3D modeling program where you can essentially build a whole building in 3D form. It's really not as glamorous as people think. Now let's talk about you. If you are interested in becoming an interior designer, here are some of my tips and my advice that I would give to you. Let's talk about the two ways that you can become a professional interior designer. Like I said, a professional interior designer is certified, they're working professionally in the industry, and they have credibility. There are two routes, in my opinion, that you could pursue. The first would be going to school and receiving a degree and then having a job from there. The second would be not going to school and just working, getting your foot in the industry, how do I do that? Let's first talk about the first option. When you're looking for an interior design school, the number one thing you need to look for is, is it CETA accredited? Accredited accredited, accredited. CIDA, C-I-D-A, stands for the Council for Interior Design Accreditation. Accreditation, it's a accreditation. This essentially tells the world that this school has a very specific interior design program, and not all schools are CIDA accredited. Next, find a school that offers either a co-op or some kind of internship program. Having real world working experience is probably the thing that employers are gonna ask for the most. Having variety is super, super important. Of course, you don't know which sector specifically you wanna get into yet in terms of design, so it's really important that you dip your toe in lots of different buckets of water. When I first went into the program, I truly thought I wanted to do residential, I wanted to be an independent residential interior, designer and now I know I suck at that. Next, before you accept anything into any school, look at their courses and look to see if there is that balance of technical skills, creative skills, and real world skills. Like I said before, I love Drexel's balance. I thought I had a lot of foundational art classes, conceptual art classes that tested my eye for design, as well as technical skills where I was learning the specific programs I'm gonna need in the real world. Be prepared to work your ass off. Grades don't matter as much in this major, but what does matter is what's in your portfolio. Time is the only way that you are going to succeed in this major and in your schoolwork. If you put in time and you put in some overnights and you put in a lot of hard work and passion, it's gonna show in your portfolio and future employers are gonna see that and you're gonna excel. You also need to have very thick skin because let me tell you, you really learn what rejection is when you go to art school. On my first day of class when I transferred to Drexel, one of my teachers kicked my project on the floor. Let me repeat that. She kicked my project. Just learn not to take rejection too personally. Networking is also one of the most important things that you can do because if you have a network and you know people in the industry, then you're gonna know who has the jobs open and they're gonna give it to you and it just, just do it. Join organizations like IIDA or what is it, IDCEC. They're all interior design organizations and you can join early as a student. This is a great way to meet people in the industry from other companies, other reps. And finally, if you went to school for interior design, and you are currently working at a firm or some kind of company, I would highly suggest that you take the NCIDQ. This is a national certification for interior design. It basically is your piece of paper that says, I am a real interior designer and I know what I'm doing. It's something that you put in your little email chain. It just gives you more credibility. One thing to note, you can't take all of the sections until you have been working for a certain amount of years in the industry. You can start taking part of it while you're a student. And I know people that have done that, in my opinion, I have yet to take it because 
A, I'm still waiting for all of my hours to be completed, and B, most companies will pay for a portion of your test taking, which can get expensive. It would be beneficial to wait until you're working at a company for at least a year or two, and you can take all the parts at once, and your employer will help you pay for it. And that's all my advice for if you wanna go to school first. The second route for if you don't wanna go to school and you just wanna get straight into the industry is a little bit more challenging to break into, but it's still very doable. You don't need a degree to be an interior designer, but you do need some kind of degree or certification in order to take the NCIDQ. There are some schools that offer accreditation classes or shorter programs where you can become a certified interior designer, but you still need some kind of schooling in order to take that test. If you want to get right to working, here's some places that you could work to break into the industry. First, you can work at showrooms. I know a ton of people who started working in showrooms, whether that be a furniture showroom, a material showroom. They go to the firms and show products, they go to the trade shows, and they can even be a part of those interior design organizations I mentioned before. There's a reason why a lot of people that either their first year out of school or while they're still in school work at showrooms or work in something with materials or products because it's a big part of what we do. If you don't wanna work at a showroom, you could intern or assist another designer. There's a ton of designers that are looking for interns and assistants, and although you won't be designing anything right away, I'm sure that they will show you the ropes and that you'll learn doing whatever it is that you're doing. Even if that's bookkeeping or attending meetings with them, organizing their schedule, you're still gonna learn a lot about how they do it and what they do. If you don't wanna go to a four-year college, you can take smaller certification exams or you can attend other classes. I know schools like um, the New York School of Interior Design, they do their schooling on a class-by-class -class basis, so you don't have to sign up for a full semester. You can kinda take classes here and there if you want, or whatever you're interested in. In addition to that, you can take other certification exams such as LEAD, which is Leaders in Energy and Energy. It's a sustainability thing. I have it and um, I should know what the name of it is. It essentially means that you are a sustainability pioneer in the world of design and architecture and you are going to fight for sustainability of of the building future, which is very important. You can also take the well exam, which is essentially the same thing, but well is more related to the health of people in buildings. Again, these are just little certifications that will show your employer like, hey, I have some knowledge in the industry and I have some skill. I can contribute something to your team. I think that's it for that. You can do it. If you really love it and you really wanna do it, you can do it, you'll find a way. And if you decide later on that this is what you love and you wanna go back to school, that's always an option in the future. And finally, what is in my future for my career? Honestly, I don't know, man. My mind changes literally every single day. Some days I think I want to become a managing principal. Some days I think I want to separate and do my own thing, work for myself. And some days I don't think I want to do it at all. I don't know. It's my career and I really enjoy my career, but I think I have other passions that are not including interior design. So you'll have to stay tuned to find out. For the meantime, I already have my LEED certification, but I will be studying for my NCIDQ this coming year and probably look into taking the WELL exam also. Please leave me a comment down in the comment section if you are interested in becoming an interior designer. Let me know if any of this helped you at all. And if you're already an interior designer, welcome to the club. And I just want to say thank you to all of my loyal subscribers. I know there's only like 300 of you right now, but I can see all the people that comment on all my videos and you guys are all so sweet And whenever I see one of your cute little comments, it just like makes my day I just wanna let you all know that I appreciate it and that I hope you guys are doing well during this pandemic Thanks again, and I hope to see you guys in my next video Bye I have two degrees. I have both a bachelor's and a master's degree of interior architecture and design. A master's degree, a master's in interior design. If I didn't already mention this, I received both my bachelor's and my master's of interior architecture and design. Your master's degree, master's degree. I have a master's as a master's uh, without a master's degree, just my typical bachelor's degree. Keep in mind, I have a master's degree. <laughs> we get it, bitch. You have a master's degree. Jeez. <laughs>